starting stream. Stream is started. Stream is started, Micah. What, Micah? I'm not doing anything on purpose, Micah. The only thing that's done on purpose here is your mother. What's up, Freddy? What's up, GF? GF and Freddy, keep it real. Well, Philip, I know when you're getting into bed, so uh, I'll just jump right on stream, if you know what I'm saying. How are we doing? Yep, Anthony, that's what you sent me. You sent me shit. All the it's shit. The All the shit. It's What's up, Rich? Toss, toss it in the trash. That ain't my dad. That's a cell phone. What's up, Nate? Flash screen. Yeah, it goes, it goes away. That'll go away. I know it does. I know it does, Chris. Brazil. Well, welcome. Chris, How are the five cats, dogfish, and guinea pig? Oh, they're doing well. They're not dead, so. Kenna's here with us. She's over there on the floor. So this one was sent in by Anthony and chat there um, so so far I've done a little testing before I started the stream I kinda wanted to get an idea of what it was doing so I wasn't wasting a bunch of time on stream since we don't have much time left in the day anyway so the phone will not enter recovery mode it will go into DFU mode but it, it's real finicky to get in DFU mode and then once it is in DFU, when you go to restore the phone, when it comes out of DFU and tries to go into recovery, the USB device becomes unrecognized by the computer. Although TriStar does seem to be working properly, I have a feeling that TriStar may be causing part of our issues. So I'm going to replace TriStar first since it is the only chip that talks directly with the USB devices other than the CPU. The CPU kind of talks through TriStar, but... Hopefully, it's just a bad TriStar. How's the doggy doing with pain? She's been good. We've been giving her a, a little muscle relaxer and that seems to have helped her out a lot. She's still grunty. She's always grunty though. She's just old. Old and grunty. Still loves to bother the piss out of me. Even though she's old and grunty. Got that i6 plus touch fixed. Chris turned out to be a ripped cable 10 hours down the rabbit hole because I believe the guy who said he changed it. Nate, you never believe anybody about their parts. That's why I got a new charge port and home button out for this 5S. And I'd bypass the battery because you can't trust them. Now, honestly, sometimes people will replace parts, but even then the parts can be faulty. And I've seen that before. So I always like to try to use my own stuff that I know is working. That way I can eliminate a variable with parts. You'd be amazed how many times we get phones in here where it's like, phone has no image, and then we put a new screen on it. Phone has image. What are you talking about? This one, like, very soon they close it up, the screen will black like, won't respond to the power button or nothing. Is the battery dead? No. Turn on. Like whenever I put in the hook in the 
make sure that the backlight thing was covered up. Please come off shield, please. I don't want to have to turn up the heat, but I will. Why you no come off? Why you always crying? Oh, I heard it coming loose. I hear it. I can hear it and feel it. Sometimes 5S's just take absolutely forever to come off. I run a fairly low heat, so it makes it even worse sometimes. I'm about to turn it up. This is really getting annoying. All right, bitch, going up to higher heat. We're coming off today. Tired of waiting. Higher heat it is. Oh, there we go. Instantaneous. Look at there. Came right off there. I'm going to turn the heat back down. Alright, so we're going to assume that douchebag here, Tristar, is bad. What's up, Aaron? What are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? Buddy, oh, pal, oh, buddy, oh, pal. Why are 19 people watching this that don't like it? A lot of people watch my streams and don't like it. I think they're here for the torture. My, uh, speaking of torture, my tweezers, my hot tweezers this morning, one of the, uh, one of the inserts, the cartridge that is the actual tip, decided it was going to stop working today. So now it's throwing an error code because the temperature sensor inside of the tweezers is not reading correctly so it won't let the tweezers turn on so I had to order new uh, new iron pieces for it luckily I found a place in New Jersey that can overnight them but for now I'm back to my micro pencil rocking the micro pencil I don't like it as much because it, it's great for small work but like this stuff right here, because there's not enough heat on the end of the tip, it tends to drag solder sometimes instead of picking it up like it should, like the tweezers will. So it gets a little annoying. Yeah, YouTube is hit or miss on notifications. I hardly get any now. I have Jason at STS is set to notify me whenever he puts up anything or, or streams or does anything and I never get notifications from him. Don't know why. Alright, we got our TriStar area cleaned up. What did you break now? First it was the streaming computer and now whatever it is. I don't know. Yeah, I went ahead and bought two sets of them, and they're like 50, they were cheaper, I think they were like $52 a piece, and then I just overnighted them, so. I think it came out to be like $130 or something like that. But, I went ahead and bought two of them, because one of mine is still good, the other one's bad, so. Eventually I figure I'll have enough tips left over from spares that I can just make another set. 
Alright, let's put down a little flux. Flux is down. Got our chip in place. Let's heat it up. Heat it up, heat it up, heat it up. Heating up my chip. Okay. It's good. Drop test micro tweezers? No, I, I don't want to. Aaron, you can't post links. Do I recommend IP Box 2 or the 3000, the Navi Plus? Um, the I, IP Box has a little more options. You can kind of look at the, uh, you can look at the blocks on the actual NAND to see if there's any bad ones or anything. So, if you want one that can actually like go through the blocking of the actual NAND, the, the IP box is better than the Navi Plus. Navi Plus is just more convenient. It's all in one unit. You literally just plug it in, fucking click a button. So, it's up to you. Um, I mean, the NANDs are... I guess being able to repair the NAND is nice. That That's a good feature. All right, so let's get this back in the housing. And let's retest and see if we can get into recovery mode. I don't know if the charging port was bad per se, but I also don't want to put it back in just for the simple fact that I don't know what the issue was or not. What you got back there, Micah? CPU is getting hot as shit. What has you, what have you changed? I haven't done nothing. I tried to dip the screen as well I did, but the CPU is getting I just now noticed the CPU is getting hot as shit. I haven't done nothing. Why do you keep saying I haven't done nothing? I haven't done nothing. Because I swapped out the screen to try to dip the screen, but I mean, other than that, I haven't done nothing. So from the first time you booted it up to now, this is where you're at? This is where I'm at. The CPU, well, it's, it's cooled off now by the time I disconnected the battery and disconnected the phone. Is there any signs of liquid damage in the phone? Um, none of the, none of the uh, things are triggered. But on this old screen, it was pretty nasty on the inside, and I think there was some up near the, up the top, but that wouldn't be near on the CPU. I mean, it's been, obviously, been dropped in the same against the ground a few times. The shell's pretty busted up, and there's a lot of, it looks like it's been bent before. Alright, computer sees it in DFU again. It won't go into recovery even with the new TriStar. But I'm hoping that through DFU we can do something. Let's see. Feel free to open up 3U tools. Thank you. It's a coil? No. Tell me which coil. I'll replace it. I don't think it's a coil.
Well, it entered recovery mode that time. Well, no, it didn't. It sounded like it did. It didn't give me the error that time, but it didn't. Uh, Aaron, is it okay to... Are we trying to... Well, there it goes. Now it says USB device not recognized. What the fuck is going on here? What mode is it in? This is still in DFU mode. We'll try again. Actually, hold on. We don't want to do that. Just fix it so we don't care about re retaining data. I don't know if we can retain data, to be honest. Well, no, it's fucking booting back up again. It goes into DFU mode every time, but let's see. Yeah, it's still not talking to it. Yeah, it cannot switch into recovery mode. You had similar issues, U25RF. What's going on? Is this thing supposed to be portable? No. Didn't think so. Nope, nope, nope. Well, there's that part. Okay. So I need to go back in. Tell me you need a laptop drive, 2.5 inch. Yes, sir. You think it'll be about the same price? Uh, yeah, should be. I'll just bring it. I doubt I can get there and get back within an hour. So okay. I'll bring it by the Sounds good. See ya. Five S stuck in DFU. This one's not stuck in DFU though. It, it it'll kick out of it. It'll come out of out of DFU and it'll like right now it's trying to boot up. Like it's got the Apple logo on it, but the problem is it'll sit here on the Apple logo, and the amp draw will be somewhat normal, and then it'll shut off and reboot itself. Martin, when you say you had a similar issue, are you saying that it was stuck in DFU or it was it wouldn't go into recovery out of DFU? Let me see what U25RF is. I don't see any signs of liquid damage on this board, but doesn't mean there isn't. You got it figured out, Micah? Nope. Well, what are you doing to figure it out? I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know where to put it from there. Have you tried disconnecting battery and hooking up the power supply and see what it's doing? Pulls an amp. Solid. Okay. Um, does it pull it as soon as you hook it up, or does it wait a second? No, it takes it takes a second or two to boot up, and then then it'll go to. It'll and it just sits there. It'll like start off seventy, and then it'll go up to eighty, and then it'll go up to one twenty. Well, it should, but does it come down or does it just stay no, it at one? Stays, just start undoing what things that you plugged into it. And, and I did. I tried to set. I tried to set the screen. I'm only plugging in just the 
digitizer and LCD part, uh, connect FECs, and uh, I've tried both. Does it show the Apple logo at all? No, it, it's just black, black, no backlight. Is there an image on the screen? Let's see. Oh no. This one doesn't kick into recovery, it just tries to boot up and then restarts. Free spray the hell out of it. I don't know if that's a smart idea. We could free spray the NAND, see if it boots up. I don't think it's the NAND though. Could be, I guess, but let's see if we have any signs of liquid. Doesn't look like it. Alright, let's hook up the screen. Connectors no. look good. Yep. Image no backlight. Okay. So did you short out the backlight and burn up a filter or fuse? I don't, well, hold on. It might. Oh, wait, no. I think I got the battery. Yeah, the battery's undone. So it's weird. Um, no, I undid the battery each time. Each time I did it, it was as I was close. Is as I was closing the. Okay, and you're 100 percent positive the backlight lines were covered up on the. This one. I got a piece of tape over it. Uh, Has tape over, but one side is exposed. So it's not seen it. That's not the screen I'm using. What about the other one? The other one's completely covered. I looked at it. I can look at it. But that was the one that I was gonna use, but. Well, pull, we need to pull the shields on it and see why it has no backlight or look at the filter and see why it has no backlight. Where's the filter now? Right next to the connector. Yeah, so it just rebooted. Even free spraying the NAND, it rebooted. Uh, yeah, the stuff came in, but it, for some reason I can't get it to work with the computer. I've even tried it on my new computer and it won't it won't talk to the meter for some reason. The drivers and everything install properly but it won't. For some reason it will not it will not read from the meter itself. Can I see the phone, Michael? Uh, why not? Uh, yeah, we're still, still working on it. It's having more problems. Uh, Uh, depends on what all is messed up here. Uh, could I leave you a number by any chance if it gets done today? Yeah. Then yeah. Give me a call if it doesn't have to be time too. It may be fairly shortly if this is just a real minor issue. Oh, okay. Uh, gotta go shower. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you. No problem. You had a piece of metal in the FPC. So the metal shorted out the ground to the backlight, and by doing so, it burned up the filter. Okay. Hey there. I'm gonna go grab yours.
Believe it when I see it. So the 5S, uh, it's still going to turn it on, it's just doing the same shit. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like this, I've never seen one that won't go into DFU and I've never seen one that, uh, there's right there, it's right there. Right there. So I'm not sure what exactly is causing this problem. Let me follow the USB lines. I mean they go to TriStar first. So I'm not sure what our issue is. Could we be NAND? NAND is a pain in the dick on these because it's literally right behind the CPU and you have to use a shit ton of heat to get it off. Um, chances are doing NAND will cause an, a CPU short. So I'm not overly confident in that. Let's see. Going down through here looking at the lines. There's the TriStar lines. PMU detect, that's for a USB detection. TriStar AC1 connection, AC2. Yeah, Paul, I'm, I'm, I got the meter, but I've tried everything I can think of. Like, I've watched every video that other people have set theirs up with. I even got a brand new computer that's never had anything installed on it and hooked up that meter, and it still doesn't want to read it. So I, I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know if the meter itself just doesn't want to read properly or what. Um, as far as this one goes, I'm really kind of confused here. I'm trying to think what would cause a USB communication issue other than TriStar. I mean, the only thing I can think would be CPU, but... 
I don't know what would be fucked up with CPU. At least not randomly fucked up. Let's check under here and see. It's nothing knocked off. Everything looks okay. No corrosion. No water damage. Check around NAND, see if we see anything out of the sorts. If it was a NAND short, I don't even think it would want to turn on. Uh, in most situations, I see NAND shorts that draws about 400 to 600 milliamps and won't boot. So I don't think that is it. Let's pull this shield and see what we got. This gasket, not shield. I don't see anything there. That chip's a little discolored, but I don't think that has anything to do with it. NFC? No, I don't think it's NFC. Sorry you send me the worst stuff. I'll be sure to include more gummy bears. The gummy bears got eaten today. All of them are gone now. All the gummies are gone. Well, I'm trying to think here. What else could be our problem? The E75 pairs go direct through to TriStar. I don't see where they make any stops. They have test points, but... Uh, let me check. I think there was one up here that went to the CPU directly. What's Navajo? Navajo. Let's look that up. Navajo. Navajo to PMU interrupts. Navajo must be the charge port. It's got a interrupt line for, I guess, charging signal that goes to the CPU. Uh, let's see what else it has. It's got a clock line. Not sure why it has a clock line. SPI 2 clock data which goes to the... Where does it go to? I don't see anywhere on the board where it goes. Evidently there's a clock line that goes to nothing on this board. Gotta go to something. I don't know what though. Nothing's highlighting when I click on it. Uh, let's see. Mesa home button? I don't think a home button would do it. Home button works fine. Uh, touch ID. If touch ID didn't work, I, I don't think it would keep it from turning on. See if I can figure out where TriStar talks. How these four prime screens come out? They come out through the front after you pull the screen on the board and everything comes out through the front. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Can you look at this real quick? Before you do that one. Just see if these speakers in this thing are the same. If not, just tell them they're not the same. Or even look them up. Just look up the model numbers and see if they're the same ear speaker or speaker just type speaker in general I don't know
Yeah, that's what I told him. He's like, well, they're the same maker. I was like, okay. If you want to, just don't even bother. Just call him and tell him they're not the same. Are you sure? Yeah, uh, it's, it's just not worth it. Unless you want to take it apart, you can. No, I, I want to get this fucker done so I can probably, this other one will probably be the last one we'll be able to do. I, I don't understand why he doesn't go get another one of those phones. They're like 40 fucking dollars. Trying to start our mic bus. No, we're not looking at microphone. Trying to start AP interrupts. No. Trying to start BMU. JTAG. I mean, it's got to be these uh, USB. Yeah. There's USB data lines that go from TriStar to. Uh, to the CPU. That's the only thing that I can think. So, yeah. Just tell him that they're not the same microphone setup. So it's got an AP by TriStar USB negative and positive line that go to the CPU and we can test those resistors that'd be the only thing that we could really test other than replacing TriStar which we've already done so let's pull a CPU shield and test these resistors for the proper resistance It's really odd to me. The home button won't put it into recovery mode, but it'll put it in DFU mode. And you have to wait a while after it boots, or after it tries to boot, to even get it into DFU. Alright. Yeah, so it's these two resistors right here this one here and this one. So let's see. What are they supposed to be? zero ohm and zero ohm so they're supposed to be pretty much filters or a fuse and they're both good so let's see what they meter this is the negative hey, one this is like BNC. I'm calling about uh, two ZTEs that were dropped off here oh, okay alright thanks bye what they say Wrong number? Okay. Well, we try. Ultrasonic bath. Give it a bath. Uh, we could do that. I don't think there's any water damage in it, but... I don't know if it'll do any good to, to run it through the ultrasonic or not. Sometimes ultrasonic does work magic. generally heats up the board. We'll go pop it in the ultrasonic. Not much else we can do now. We'll see what it does.
Now we wait. We got so much, so much shit left to do. So little time. If we get done with this and fast enough, if the Sonic doesn't work, I'm gonna, which I don't think it will, but I, maybe the heat of the bath can can make something that's fucked up work again. I have seen ultrasonic get phones to work again for no fucking reason, and people pop shit in the IR ovens all the time and warm up the boards and titty things work so we'll see what happens hey there I, I'm I'm actually still working on yours yours right now is that right yeah get it today um, I'm hoping to get it done today. You should be able to. They're no, not hard. I just gotta get the the digitizer the pulled and get it, get it all together. Okay. Uh, we got another stop to make it uh, a little bit back out of town. Uh, give me a call if it's not gonna be. I want some more pack. Okay. If you're not gonna make it. Okay. See about. Uh, well, you only got about thirty minutes anyway. Right? Okay. If the frame come off, I said, "Yeah." How's the frame come off? Did you not see it in the video? They took the whole digitizer off first. You can do that actually if you want, but you have to be able to pull the LCD without breaking it. Yeah, no, that's what I don't want to have to do. But it'll come out. It, you just have to get it in down beside the LCD, and there's it'll pop out. Here. Use mine. Do do do. Couple more minutes should be done. Then we'll test it again after we wash it off. I gotta ship these phones back out. I've had a lot of bad luck this week with phones that just don't want to fucking work properly. I got an S6 here. I need to do a PMIC on it and see if I can get it working because it's got a dead short off the PMIC. And I don't have any good known good S6 boards here to really compare with. But right off the PMIC, there's a filter that has pretty much a zero ohm short. I don't know if that line should be that way. I wouldn't imagine it should be, but. Start on the thin side where the battery is, Micah. No, you have to do it. Well, you can do it from that side to pop it free to start, but yeah, right in there. Okay, let me see it.
top portion you kind of have to cut it back some to get back to where the gap is. Yeah, where the frame goes in. Glass, my phone. I'm gonna pick that away. Oh, James, a nice shard of glass, my phone. Mm. All right, let me go grab my board. Let's see. Let's dry this thing off some. Can see the compressed there. nice and dry it off let's see if it does anything different I doubt it but we shall see ah uh, about to find out if we're up up shit creek without a paddle there's a possibility that's that's the only thing that sucks about board repair like I don't like to say it but some of them you just can't fix and you have to call them it's just not worth the time to invest to try to figure out or trying to figure out what's wrong with it just could be an absolute nightmare I'm not a big fan of calling things as has been proven by Jessa when she calls me out for going down rabbit holes but I do like to try to figure things out and I've learned that as I get more work that you do have to kind of prioritize what's worth dealing with and what's not all right so we got Apple logo let's see if we get any other signs of life other than Apple logo I'm watching the amp draw right now the crazy thing is the amp draw looks normal for like a little bit and then it goes kind of weird uh. 
So right now it's drawing about 700, back down to 300, up to 700, back to 300, 700. I get, it looks normal, but then it'll get to a point usually and it just drops off. It'll drop to like 100 milliamps and then it's over with. Oh, starting to get there. Let's see. It's getting to that point where it drops off to 100 milliamps. Yep, there it is, 182. And now it's going to shut off. Now it's shut off. So it's still doing the same exact thing. It gets to a point in the process of booting and then it just fucks up. I don't know what's happening. Let me try putting pressure on the CPU. Maybe that'll make some difference. I don't know. Let me turn my current limit up just to make sure it's not like overcurrenting for a split second and fucking itself. Okay, plug that in. Let's prompt it to boot. Okay, prompted it to boot. Now let's see what it does. B and C. Uh, seven o'clock. Seven. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Did you call the guy on the I six? Oh shit! No. Is that who that was? No. I just remembered it because he asked what time it closed. All right, so. It's still booting up. Let's see what it does. No, nope, it just did the 160, 103, and off. So I have no clue. I've, I've never seen anything like this. It's doing some weird stuff, man. I would say, Aaron, unfortunately, this one's probably not going to hey, be this mic being, see, I was a you fix. Know the iPhone 6 is done. Yep. Alright, sounds good. Let me try a new screen. Maybe something in the screen's fucking with it. I wouldn't think that that would be the case, but... That's the only thing we haven't changed yet. We haven't just tested with a different screen. So let's plug in a different screen, just to roll that out. Just to make triple sure. Alright, so let's plug in our power. Oh yeah, TCRS. When you get fast to the internet, it's night and day. Wait, that's the same speed we have here at the at the business. Five hundred a month. Ooh. Fuck that. Business class internet gets fucked even even more, so Alright, let's see what it does. Watch the amp draw. I don't even think it's pulling anything off the USB. Yeah, the USB is not even giving any amperage off, I don't think. I have no idea. It, it's. 
I would assume that it's something to do with either CPU or NAND. Uh, if it is NAND, like I said, if I pull NAND, there is a very high chance that CPU is going to be short afterwards. Um, I don't know if it's worth uh, the time or not for an iPhone 5S. Especially if it's just going to wipe the data. At that point, they can buy an iPhone 5S for $100 or $150. One terabyte. I'd love to have that. All right. Well, we'll have to call that one a no fix, unless somebody has any ideas that could cause that. I have no idea. I've never, I've never run into something like this. Usually, that they'll always go into recovery mode. And this one won't even go into recovery. And then, when it does go into recovery, it says that. Or when it tries to, it says that the USB device is not recognized. So that tells me that it's having something wrong. With the data communication between CPU and USB, our CPU and USB lines check out. Put a new TriStar on, put on a new, or check the resistors by CPU. They check out. So, my guess is CPU related issue. So, Anthony, um, sorry to say, I don't think I can fix it. Don't think I can fix it, Anthony. At this point, if they're willing to spend $160, I'd say, here's your new phone. Enjoy it. I'll send you another 5S if you want. I'll buy one and send it to you. Possibly be faulty. Uh, I mean, it could be faulty, but the thing with it, usually if TriStar is bad, I'll, sh I'll hook it up and show you here. Usually if TriStar is faulty, the charging port won't pull any amperage whenever you plug it in. And this one is. And it'd be awfully weird that the original TriStar and the new one would have the same USB error. That's fairly uncommon. And then also to back that up, you also have the fact that it won't go into re recovery mode, which is also odd. Uh, there's just too many commonalities that it, it would be TriStar again. Um, I even tested TriStar beforehand, and it was acting normal but I replaced it because of the USB device not recognized uh, issue which can be TriStar but it can also be a CPU issue uh, because CPU I, th I think it's CPU well CPU does all the communications between USB so uh, it definitely can be that but um, I'm trying to remember where it was I've seen it before where you get that error when CPU had problems we worked on one before like that. It was one that was has that was stuck in some weird mode, and every time you would plug it in, it would it would see the device, but it would go immediately to USB device unrecognized, and it turned out that the CPU was uh, what well, had corrosion around the CPU that had caused the issue to start. So I can only attribute it to a CPU problem. 
that one was after water damage though, so it's kind of odd that this one, really there's no water damage on this one, but we're having similar symptoms. Okay, Paul, where'd you get those from? I'm saving up. I'm, um, I think I'm going to get a new microscope camera and stuff, so I can apply it towards that. I talked to, uh, I've, I've got my other camera sold, so it's a good camera. I mean, it does, it does a good job does really high resolution photos and stuff but I just can't I can't get the the FPS that I need for streaming out of it that I would like so it actually does higher resolution than the one I'm looking at uh, this one will do I think it's almost close to uh, 1440p but the resolution may be great but the FPS is just not there when it go up that high the new one does 1080p at 60 frames and it also does auto focusing which will uh, take some of the responsibility off of me we don't, we don't have any in stock I don't think um, what is it? Uh, Samsung Galaxy S5 S5 what? batteries Batteries, doubt it. Yeah, I, I doubt we have any. Um, we can order them. I mean. uh, okay, no problem. Alright, bye. So we have an S5 on the side. What? Uh, is Lewis streaming? Lewis didn't stream yesterday. take a day at least and then after that we'll have to uh, after we get everything moved off we'll image your old drive flash it to that one put it in and see if it's working everything's fine on it it should be good after that um when do you need it by as soon as possible okay um i've got to shoot uh, rick balls a little bit for drag illustrated next week okay is monday too late no Monday's okay? Yeah. Alright, I'll try to have it done by Monday. Okay. If right. not, just let me know. It's not that, it's not huge. Too. Okay, we'll do. Thanks, Drew. See ya. Hey, Drew. Oh, the iPhone. The 6. Grab it. So, how many phones do y'all do like a week? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of phones. We've probably done. Yeah. There you go. All righty, thank you. No problem. See you guys. See ya. <clears throat> all right, let's plug all this back in. Let me put my shields on. Martin, I, I haven't seen a boot sequence. I've always wondered that, like what turns on before what and in, in the boot sequence of the iPhone I know what kind of pot like I know roughly which power rails are supposed to be on at certain times but it's still not like specific it's not like a, a MacBook where it has S3, S4, S5 state clearly listed I got, I got a question for you Chris. Yeah. how do you get to, how do you get to digitize the cable That's underneath the frame you have to take the LCD, LCD out Use a thin playing card and slide it in between the two. Don't use alcohol or anything. And then make sure you don't hit the cable. The cable's up towards the top. So stay. Well, the cable is up towards the top of the screen. So you want to kind of cut along the edges. 
You got those plain cards. Or well, those thin clear cards. Yeah, those are even thinner. Just use those. Put our battery bracket back on. Plug in our cable here. This thing's pretty bent up in the corner, and you notice that. As far as the screen goes in it. Uh, let's plug it into the power supply and see what it does while it's charging. If it acts, if it acts normal or not. Yeah, Anthony, no good news, buddy. I can't get anything out of it. It, it keeps doing the same shit over and over, and I'm not sure why it's causing, what's causing it. See what it does when it charges. So it's trying to boot itself up. It's not going to boot, but I'll let it try to run through just to let it do its thing. Uh, Anthony, if you got a 5S, I mean, you could sell him one. That'd be the only thing I could see doing with it. <clears throat> I'm going to check one more thing before I call it. I want to see what information that 3U will tell me about the phone. See if there's anything that doesn't look right. It shut itself off. Yeah, I feel like the dock connector or something's messed up on it too, because with the original stuff, I, can, I can't even get it to go on the DFU. It'll do it with the, the other port. You luck? I'm getting it slowly. I got it lifted, but it's I got the L C D here, but it's not be careful towards the top.
it's adhesive down to the back of the LCD flex a little bit and it has a, a flip up connector. Okay. What did? What was it that I can't remember all of it? So what? the the backlight went out. So it's like uh, digital. Doc, I mean, they've had it for two and a half weeks trying to think and see if it's. So a, they said uh, it's water damaged. Well, that's what Apple said. It was so I, I replaced my screen stuff on my own and done it for years. Yeah. And so super easy to do. Well, I take the digital doc because when I replaced the screen, it didn't work, and that screen came off of working. So I knew it worked, and so they took it apart, looked at the board and everything like that. Well, I didn't even think about taking it apart when I took it back to Apple. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently there's some kind of residual left on some part of the phone on the inside, so Apple called it water damage when you work on it. So, okay. Uh, I just, I mean, more than likely, I mean, if we can get it fixed, we can take the memory of that and put it on another one that's working, which we all have to do, because I've got some very important financial information. Because when the screen went out, it had a passcode on it, so I couldn't back the thing up. Mm hmm And I've had to reset the computer since the last time, because I forgot the password. Well, it, unfortunately, you to swap the memory, you have to swap the CPU, baseband, and EEPROM chip, which is extremely difficult. Is it? Yeah. So, let's try to get the backlight working. That's a hundred times easier. Yeah. Yeah, they've been in here messing with it. That's for sure. Which sucks that this happened to me, knowing that happens all the time to other people. Yeah. And ultimately, I've got four phones mm -hmm. with me totally. And if we can look at, I mean, because I'm just going to flip them, honestly, uh, in regards to. Getting like a, a discount rate working on four, if they'll do that and like that, or? Uh, it just depends on what they are. Yeah. Uh, not originally. Micah, where are you from? <laughs> originally? Where? Illinois. Illinois. Hello? Yep. What's that mean? Not working? Alrighty. Well, I guess swinging back by. Are you going to be here tomorrow? Okay. Well, we'll take a look at it. Alright, later.
did the phone charge the Angie's phone charge? Um, I did honestly didn't check charging. He said it's not charging. I checked um, that it was that the USB was showing up on the phone and then showing up on the computer and then going away on on the phone as I'm plugged. I didn't think to check the charging. I should have. see many easy ones. Okay, so I have no display at all. It's not just a backlight issue, it's just no display. Let me go grab a screen test. I've got a screen, I've got two screen. I've got two screen. I just use one and oh, it's working. No offense. Oh, no, you're good. I know, I understand, I understand. What are you doing? Getting the... Where the flex goes there, it's, they tape it down, it's really strong. I wouldn't hate that panel. Well, I don't know how to get it off there. Your tweezers won't go under that? They, they will not go underneath it. It's held on pretty strong. Yeah, so our issue isn't backlight, it's probably not getting power for the LCD panel. Okay. There's no image at all, and if we don't have image, we don't have backlight. Okay. So let me check that. Okay, so the LCD display line, uh, the power rail mm -hmm. that feeds it is shorted out, so that's why it's not working. Okay. So let's see what's causing our short. Hopefully something simple.
that would be simple to take that part from another phone and put it in there? Or uh, yeah, I just need to figure out what's what's bad. Because I because well, I didn't interest them on that phone, so I built one once I get it off, so I'm gonna mail it in. It's part of the claim. Okay. So I've got I mean instead of using a brand new card, I mean I've said pay you guys whatever labor costs and whatever you guys want to charge. Just I would said that we've been mailing it back in. There's not really any point in putting a bunch of money into it. Well, I guess that's. How much is data worth to you? <laughs> no, it's, 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 I, I've already told Dad I said pay up to two hundred dollars, everything off there. So. Well, we won't be anywhere near that, but we'll get your screen working again for you. I hope that note near that's underneath it, not over. Oh no, it's <laughs> not over. There's not many things, unless this thing was like water damaged, that you would be close with that. But that's about it. So the thing, the only thing water damage wise was those marks that you, that you saw essentially, right? Uh, they're not water damage, it's flux. It's where they put that backlight coil on. I got you. They just didn't clean it up when they were done. I didn't make Which, that at me, so I'm not surprised, but they, uh, they had it for two and a half weeks. So listen guys, I'm going to Nashville, can I just come people, we're in the middle of work on it, so that's fine. So I just, I'm going to come get it before you guys close it. Well, we're not going to be done with it. Yeah. How long do they have it? Two and a half weeks. For backlight? Yeah, for what they thought was an issue. Huh. And backlights, if it's what they replace, that's a that's a quick job. Because they were taking stuff from the motherboard and looking at the motherboard and stuff. And they, uh, they told me all the managers did all that. And of course, I know the, I've met the owner. Could have had done business with him before. And it seems like a super nice guy. Of course, he's not the one working on anything, you know? Yeah, he doesn't know much about cell phones. Yeah. And so they said, oh, well, all of our managers are the ones who pull, work on the motherboard. So that's fine. I said, I just need something else to do with it. I'm sure that made him happy. <laughs> They're trying. They've messed up quite a few phones, but they try. Yeah. We had a 6 Plus here that they tried to touch IC on, which is a easy job. We do, we do them daily. We've actually got three here for it. And, uh, easy job. Shouldn't, shouldn't take but maybe three hours tops shouldn't have any problems uh, they brought us the phone after they had worked on it phone would not touch would not work at all and the CPU had been overheated and it wouldn't boot up sometimes and then after we got it to boot up and we replaced all the touch stuff that we could find still had no touch determined that since the CPU had been overheated most likely the CPU wasn't telling the phone that the the touch panel needed to be turned on and they lost all their photos because of a simple job that they shouldn't have even attempted. I mean, I understand things mess up every now and then, but I've seen videos of where they do their work and they don't, you have to really test and make sure what your temperatures are and when things are ready to, to be reflowed or whatever. And they just, they didn't do any of that. So I got a question for you. Do you all have business cards? Store yeah, there sh there should be some right there. Take a small handful of them. Sounds good to me. Cause a lot of stuff we see the guy that owns Matrix in Franklin, but he he doesn't know much about the phone. So. Well, we're trying to get a store open in Franklin by the end of the year. Really cool. Yep. Cool. Saving them for it. All right, so we do have a common capacitor that fails which is this one here, so I'm going to take it off. So, I was looking on your Facebook. How do you know uh, Ben Davis? Uh, ben, I met him a long time ago uh, through car stuff. Okay. Uh, I knew Ben when he still had his 240 and stuff yeah. before he was ever married or anything like that. Oh, yeah, I grew up with dude. He's yep. a little me. He's my old brother. We grew up in a church together. Yep. He loved the 240s, man. Yep. Him and 
Josh Burns also yep. him too. Yeah, I know Josh pretty well. I met Josh in 2005, I think. Really? Yeah, back when he first got his first 240. He had a, he had a maroon one. Yeah. Um, I met him over at Tim Harrison's shop when he was getting it painted. Okay. And then uh, I kind of met the group, everybody that kind of knew each other from there. Yeah. Mhm. Mm she works. That's their mhm. Mm yep. Yeah, I like Josh a lot. He's a good guy. He's had his ups and downs with with work, but I think he's got a really good job now. Oh, has he? Yeah. He's working for a company that's. Uh, He's pretty much a, a superintendent, but he gets paid a lot of money for it. Yeah. He's pretty much managing a, an entire, like, apartment complex for a guy. Really? In here in Bowling? No, it's in Paducah. Okay. He drives down there, which is nuts. Yeah. Um, he's trying to get... They've got some places... Uh, I think he said they had some... They were opening up some in Nashville or something soon, so he was going to try to get transferred up there. So he'd be a little closer to home. Although he's got a company vehicle, so I mean, he's not having to pay out of pocket or anything. I guess was right. So it was? Yep, bad capacitor. Took the cap off, the short's gone. We should have the image now. Let's see. Oh, man. Fingers crossed, we should. <laughs> Doesn't mean we will, but that definitely will cause no image. And if you have no image, that means you're not going to have any type of touch response. Yeah. Because that started slowly, it slowly went out like I dropped it one day. The backlight? Yeah. And that, uh, oh, I'll be quite honest, if it works selling tempered glass, and Franklin, you get a lot of, well, farmers, oh, I've had this phone forever, you know, this is your first iPhone, sorry, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'd throw my phone across the store with that tempered glass and the UAG case, and it worked great for about a year. <laughs> and then it started shorting out, so well, i got to stop throwing it. And, uh, and then I, it would slowly go outside, hit it against the palm of my hand, and it would come back on, you know, and work. And we started out doing it two or three times a day, then it was probably 15 times a day, and finally just went out. And that's what I took the digital dog. Yeah, I didn't know you guys were down here, so. Impacts are rough on them. I, I would highly recommend not doing that with the 7. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, uh, got a new, I got a new job today, so. Well, not necessarily just be, like the sevens we've seen are notoriously weak okay. uh, as far as the boards go. Okay. Um, impacts on them can cause the uh, board to get damaged very easily and the foam will not work again. Okay. So we've seen a couple that have come in after drops, pretty hard drops, but drops nonetheless. And the screen might be broken, but the foam will not turn back on. Let's see if that's good. All right, let's see if we have image. Do you know if the battery's charged on this or not? I had it sitting on the charger. Okay. So it should be. I mean, that is last week, so I don't know.
Looks like you're going to be a little longer than I got to, to wait. Um, yeah, I'm I putting it call. back together right now, but it still might take me a little bit. Okay. I'll give you a call in the morning. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying my best here. Yeah. Well, I know. I was hoping that I would have to make another trip. We're 10 or 12 miles out, so it's not, it's not this drop by on the way. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'm going to call them on. Well, we have image now, but still no backlight. Hmm. Got an Apple logo. No backlight. Let me see. So would the touch screen work with the Apple logo? It may, yeah. I'm going to test my screen real quick just to oh, make sure. Because if it turns on at this point, that's all I need. I'll yeah. Because like I said, I can still tap the zeros to get the... Yeah, let me make sure to touch works up. on it. I'll just boot it up. If it doesn't have backlight, it doesn't have backlight. I'll just make sure it boots. The password's four zeros. Okay. Yeah, we still don't have any backlight. See the Apple logo? Yeah. Was that screen bad too? Or? No, it's probably not bad. It's just, uh, I would guess that it's more than just the filters blown. Okay. What they replaced is the filter. It's kind of like a fuse. Okay. Um, it, it may have gotten back past that, which usually means that uh, the diode and coil and other things are damaged. Okay. All right, I'm at the main screen. I don't think I've touched the... No, I have touch. Yep, it's in. What'd you say? It's on. See? Cool, man. You're right here. Uh, There's the background there. So I know what it'll do. I can just line it up and hit the trust button. So cool. Yep. So you'll have to. Shine a flashlight on it. We'll get that where I can see it. Yep, yep. Awesome. That's all you'll have to do is shine a flashlight on it. How much do I owe you? Uh, that one there, we'll do, uh, 45. You take a card? Yeah, that's fine. Let me, throw, let me throw it back together real quick. Yeah, I'll take a stack of cards and stuff and put them at the school. For Alrighty. You got the, were you at the authorized down yeah, there? Yeah, spring mobile. Oh, okay. The only one out there in Franklin, truck beside Lowe's. Now, if y'all are looking for a building, man, uh, I don't know if y'all deep in the looking process, but there's a lot right beside ours that they're trying to fill, or a build, like, so it's like a long, kind of like this, it's a long room set up mm -hmm. uh, that they've been trying to fill. Where is it at? Uh, right there beside Lowe's and that strip mall beside Hibbets, and it's yeah. between Hibbets and at and where it would be. We've actually asked about that one, and the landlord said that the owners of the at and authorized dealer said they will not allow any other cell phone related businesses in there. Really? That was part of their, supposedly part of their agreement to move in. Okay. I knew corporate was like that. I didn't know that the spring, spring re, or authorized retailer was like that. I didn't think they were either, but we, we actually, that's where we looked first because we wanted to be near the at and building. Mm -hmm. um, and we called the landlords because they have two open spaces there. One's not too far away. Yeah, one's right beside us, mm -hmm. one's right there beside the yep. Burt's and... Yeah. And that's that's where we wanted to be, and the pricing's fair. And we called him, and he was like, "Well, the uh, the company that owns the AT and T store there has a no compete clause that we had to sign with them to get them to sign the lease." He's like, "I'll have to talk to them to see if it's okay." And then he messaged them, and then sent us an email and said that they uh, their stipulations were that it could not be any type of cell phone related businesses in their premises. Okay. I don't know why, but. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. You have a good one. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think that's going to end the stream. Sorry I didn't get to talk to everybody much. Uh, Open Broadcaster seems to have disconnected from the uh, the stream and just reconnected now, which it's it's telling me get the fuck off of here and go home.
But yeah, the, the authorized dealer down in Franklin where we're trying to get a place told us that we were not allowed to move into the building next to them because it would be a com competition because evidently AT&T authorized retailers are now doing board repairs on iPhones, which they're not. But <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of shitty. I mean, I don't understand it. I, I mean, I get they might have a little qualm if we were, like, selling phones and stuff there next to them, but I don't really have much intention of trying to compete with them as far as selling phones. I mean, I'll probably sell some, but it's not like it, I'm going to be in there like, man, I really need to sell all these phones and fuck AT&T over. But... So, unsuccessful 5S, halfway successful 6S, enough for him to get his data. Um, I have a feeling that it probably had a bone diode and coil on that one. We could have probably fixed it, but he wasn't looking for that. He just wanted to get the data off. Simple cap, which the cap that always fails, um, I'll put it up on the screen so you all can see it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What? That's good. At least it works. So, on the 6S, whenever you have a short on the 5V7 LCM line, which this one did, the cap that normally fails is this one right here. I don't know why, but this one always seems to fail. So, if C4200, or if you have a short on, on 5V7 LCM from drop damage, check C4200. I'm willing to bet it's short. Uh, that one was like the other ones I've done. That was that was the cause of the problem. Um, I I mean maybe Jessica can figure it out. I Anthony, I'm by no means the the end all be all of these stuff. So uh, if you all want to send them to somebody else, please do. Because I mean, if Jessica can figure it out, that's awesome. Because then it'll kind of show me what I'm doing wrong. Or what I need to look for and honestly that's why I like the community I like to be able to share ideas and stuff because you're gonna run into problems you've never seen and I'm sure somebody out there has seen it and possibly somebody out there has seen it and fixed it so uh, I try to share this information on YouTube for that specific reason um, and and so does Jessa and Lewis and several other people Jason and, and others what'd you do did you not make sure it was aligned? It was aligned. Everything was good. It shouldn't have cracked then. But anyway, um, that's going to be it for this stream. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to do tomorrow, so I'll definitely be streaming tomorrow. And hopefully we'll have the new computer set up so we can test that out and see if it's shitty or not. <laughs> but uh, thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow. Everybody have a good night. See ya.